Here at Mount Sinai, we perform more than 32,000 operations a year and even more procedures. We have some of the greatest operating room teams in the world. Despite this, we still see the occasional wrong-sided procedure, an unintentionally retained foreign object, and more frequently, miscommunications that happen almost as frequently as every day. So despite our expertise in this area, why do these things still happen? Why do they continue to occur? The operating room is a complex arena that involves the orchestration of multiple participants directed towards each patient's care. Like a sports team or a NASA shuttle launch, all team members in the operating room play a crucial role in assuring a successful outcome for every patient. There is a growing body of literature that supports the use of team-based systems and checklists to improve patient outcomes. Here are some examples. These investigators rolled out team steps over a period of two months. They then looked back nine months later and found statistically significant decreases in both morbidity and mortality. They also saw evidence of improved OR efficiency by an increase in the percentage of first case on start times and a decrease in turnover time. The Veterans Health Administration rolled out a team-based program that was similar to Team Steps. They used a series of briefings, debriefings, and checklists that were then used as a hiatus for a dedicated conversation about patient safety. This was a very robustly designed study that was powered for mortality, and they found a risk-adjusted mortality decrease of 50%. They also were able to reduce this dose response curve that showed that for each quarter that Team Steps was implemented, they saw a reduction in mortality of 0.5 patients per 1,000. This study was performed in Mass General Hospital in Boston. It was part of the World Health Organization's Safe Surgery Saves Lives initiative. It was rolled out in eight different countries, which included the United States, England, and New Zealand. They looked at 4,000 patients before implementation of the checklist and 4,000 patients after. These investigators found statistically significant reductions in surgical site infection, mortality, unplanned return to the operating room, and any major inpatient complication. A safe medical center results from a team effort. We, as a team, must support each other and communicate openly and accurately. The Team Steps program and the Surgical Safety Checklist are tools that can help organize our conversations and make them more effective. So Team Steps is a government-funded, structured approach to communication and team building with the goal of improving operating room dynamics. So let's just start by focusing on three simple key behaviors of the Team Steps methodology. These are the call-out, the check-back, and the two-challenge rule. So the call-out is simply announcing the information that a team needs to respond to any given situation. Now the check-back is a type of closed-loop communication where the receiver simply repeats back whatever information he or she has heard. This is especially useful when communicating information about medications such as antibiotics. Many of us do this naturally each day, but there are definitely unrecognized opportunities for these techniques that we could all take further advantage of. This may turn out to be a little more difficult than we hope. There may be some bleeding here. All right, our vital signs are pretty stable, but I'll have Kay bring us in the two units of blood from the fridge, and we'll see how it goes the next few minutes. Sure, getting two units of blood. Thank you. Now, the two-challenge rule applies whenever information that was stated was either ignored or simply disregarded. The communicator should then again politely restate the information and use a sense of urgency if needed. Dr. Hausman, I saw the light contaminated your glove. I think it's okay. Are you sure you don't want to change gloves? I'm concerned I saw it contaminated. All right, I'll change them. Thanks, Kay. We may all be able to think of situations where if someone had spoken up when something bad was happening or about to happen, we may have been able to prevent that event from occurring. So don't be afraid to speak up if you're concerned. If you see something, please say something. I'm Dr. Michael Marin, the Surgeon-in-Chief of the Mount Sinai Hospital, and I'm here to talk to you about the Surgical Checklist. The Surgical Safety Checklist has rapidly become part of the culture here at Mount Sinai, endorsed by the World Health Organization, the Joint Commission, and virtually every other safety organization nationally and internationally. Any member of the team can initiate this process, but ideally the surgical attending should be present and leading this charge. It's not just a list of important things. 
Is that part of the operation where everyone must stop and think about safety and employ each member of the surgical team to give their ideas to ensure surgical safety and the best surgical outcome? At the end of the operation, debriefings are a chance to look at what we did well and what we might do better in the future. This is your chance. Speak up, become part of the team, and integrate in patient safety. The pre-procedure verification should be performed before the beginning of anesthetic and surgical services. Ideally, it should be conducted either in the holding area or just outside the operating room as each situation requires. Each practitioner team should look at their respective sections and address each item. The team huddle should be done just after the patient enters the room. This is our final opportunity to check that everything is okay before we begin. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Good morning. My name is Kay. I'll be your circulating nurse. Mm -hmm. Dave Shukla from the orthopedic surgical team. Dr. Leibowitz from anesthesiology. Dr. Hausman, your surgeon. Fred, surgical tech. Good morning. Okay. I've confirmed that the field is sterile. Do you agree? Yes, the field is sterile. And the fire safety check is complete. I have all my meds and equipment, and uh, we're going to be giving cefazolin today? Cefazolin, correct. And it'll be two grams because she's over 50 kilos. Okay. And uh, you know she has a history of hit, so we're not going to give sub-Q heparin, but we're going to make sure the venadine boots are working. Venadines are on and circulating. Good. No heparin. And uh, we don't have to discuss beta blockers. She wasn't taking them before and doesn't need them today. But her neck is a little stiff, and I have a glide scope in the room, and Dr. Nandini, my resident, is going to be here to assist in intubation. Perfect. We have a nerve stimulator available, Fred? No, I don't, but we'll get one. OK. So to summarize, we're doing a right brachial plexus exploration on Mrs. Jones. Here's the mark. The appropriate imaging is up on the uh, monitor. And a reminder to everyone, she's a Jehovah's Witness, so no blood products. Now let's talk about the timeout. Many of us do this very well because it's already part of our culture. This should be performed after prepping and draping and just before the surgical incision. Make sure that everybody stops what they're doing and participates. Okay, timeout everyone. Stop, look, and listen. Does everyone know each other here? My resident just joined me. It's Nandini. I think everybody has to reintroduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Kay. How are you, Dave? Fred. Dr. Hausman. You know me. Great. OK, this is Mrs. Jones, date of birth January 1st, 1970. Uh, she has a history of HIT. Have the antibiotics been given? Yes, we gave Kessel two grams. OK, uh, we're doing the right side. Is that correct? That's correct. OK, uh, all of her pressure points have been padded. Is the skin prep dry, Dr. Hausman? It is. May I see the site markings? Here's the site marking, right shoulder, and the mark. OK. And patient's ASA status is 3 for diabetes, hypertension, and cardiac stent. OK. So we're doing a right brachial plexus exploration and axillary nerve reconstruction. This should be pretty routine, uh, but if there's any bleeding when I do the axillary artery dissection, uh, I will keep you posted. Uh, we have the nerve stimulator. Yes, we have it now. OK, so when I'm stimulating, you may get a carotid sinus response. OK, we'll be on the lookout for hypotension and bradycardia. Excellent. OK, anything else? One last reminder, the patient's a Jehovah's Witness, so we're not going to give any blood products. Right. If there's a second procedure that needs to be done, a new timeout should be performed with the second team. The debrief is a relatively new conversation for us, as it's not traditionally part of our culture. But have you ever thought, I wish I had more information, I wish we had talked about that at the end of the case? Navy SEALs debrief so that they can figure out what needs to be done next and what they could have done better, and our patients could benefit from debriefs as well. OK, can we do a quick debrief? The counts were correct. There's one specimen for Mrs. Jones, right axillary nerve. Correct. OK, and we did a right axillary nerve reconstruction with graft. 
And uh, Dave, what's the post-operative antibiotic plan? I gave two grams of Kepsol three hours ago. Okay, great. We'll continue Kepsol for three doses every eight hours. Uh, no, now that you said that, I noticed she has a little rash as I'm taking down the drape, so you may want to reconsider maybe changing the clindamycin or having ID weigh in what the antibiotic should be. All right, let's use clindamycin post-op. And as another reminder, she didn't get any sub-Q heparin because of the history of HIT and only got the venodine boots. Right, so no heparin post-operatively uh, will give her compression stockings while she's in bed. And there's no need for a beta blocker post-operatively. I gave one liter of fluid. I think your EBL was about maybe 200 milliliters. Yeah, about 200 mLs of blood loss. Uh, we'll take the Foley catheter out in the morning. How were the counts? The counts were correct. Uh, were there any equipment malfunctions? Uh, there's some scissors in the tray that need to be sharpened. Okay, I'll take them and have them tagged and repaired. Opportunities for improvement? Uh, I could have noticed the rash a little bit earlier, but it's pretty hard with the draping for this case. Uh, and also just remember that we have to continue the aspirin postoperatively for the issue of the stent. And I'll make sure I check up on her in the PACU in a half an hour before we start the next case and make certain this rash hasn't progressed to anything more serious. Okay. And we could expose distally first so that we know the length of the graft, save a few minutes there. But all in all, very good job. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Always use the surgical safety checklist and practice team step skills. This is to improve communication and teamwork before, during, and after a surgical procedure to optimize patient care and outcomes. Encourage discussion and empower your teams to speak up if they have a concern. Thank you for your continued cooperation and your dedication towards patient safety efforts. See you in the OR.